We are we are a couple of weeks into the new year. What do you hope will happen, not only in 1984, but the rest of your professional life? What are your dreams? What's left? Mm, to rule the world. <laughs> there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Madonna. Pop Persona. Madonna. A docu-original. Where to start with the woman who sought to rule the world and achieved it? Welcome to DocU, and welcome back, you universers. Subscribe to join the U universe. This is the Pop Persona docu series where I explore how a pop culture icon and their public image has made the world obsessed with them. I pinpoint and highlight the exact reason why a star is a star, and there has been no bigger and more adored and despised star than Madonna. She was undoubtedly the most famous person of the 20th century, rivaled only by Michael Jackson himself. However, she has him beat as a divisive figure by a long shot. The dancer who can't sing, the whore with no talent, the saving grace of expression of female sexuality in pop music, the pop music iconoclast, the pop culture icon. She is everything and so much of everything to the point where people forget why she even became famous. Her mononym, Madonna, and the character of its public persona cast a shadow that very nearly envelops her art. Almost. Just almost. She quite simply has the single most impressive catalog of any pop musician in history and the sales to match. She is an artist artist, a forever changing chameleon who wrote the damn book on how to reinvent and consistently fill it with new bold chapters. And Madonna is a living legend. There have been far and few female pop stars that have not been inspired by her to a degree. And the ones who have praised her publicly could fill an endless list. She is simply the most influential artist in pop music still alive today. Why do we love her? Or more so, why did we love her back then? 1983 was an interesting time in music, the end of disco, the rise of new wave, and a major revolution of pop unlike anything seen before or since. Dance pop was filling the clubs and needed a voice and Madonna served as that voice. That face and that image that would push the genre forward and as far as it could possibly go consistently for 25 years straight at the most mainstream level it could reach. She had a presence. She was it. Everyone who knew her saw, felt, and believed that she was a star. By 1982, she had shoved a mixtape into the hands of producer Mark Kamins, featuring a demo for her first single, Everybody. He introduced her to Seymour Stein, then boom, pop history was made. Of teenage fans were treated to red satin Madonna jackets, Madonna albums, and Madonna posters as they waited for the singer to arrive for the premiere of her film, Desperately Seeking Susan. If anyone wonders why people would go to see this movie, Madonna fans have the answer. I love her. I love her. She's gorgeous. I think she's a good singer. She's just live. I mean, everything about her. She's fresh, yeah. <laughs> when the star herself arrived, she blew a kiss to her fans. What do you think of the way Madonna's dressed tonight, huh? And she gave us some hints about her character. She's um, irresponsible, she is adventurous, she's courageous, and she's very vulnerable. Is she Madonna? We have some things in common. You said you always knew you'd be a star. Did you think it would be like this? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> Gene Wolfe Entertainment Tonight. I want my MTV. She soon became the object of our affection and our dismay. Hit after hit, video after video, she stunned us. The Madonna wannabes flocked to her cool girl image and the world began to really absorb the brand Madonna. This was the first real visual marker of her new and now unmatched power in the music industry. The ability to make us wish we were as cool as her. In look, in sound, in dance, she was the new archetype for the postmodern star. Soon the industry started innovating its sound, showing more skin, getting more daring with its production value in the arena where Madonna remains its supreme champ. Music videos. 
What a place to express such a bold personality that can be witty, brilliant, sexy, and fascinating nonetheless, at least when shown in the best light. Madonna can be very... Madonna. He won't be able to find his on him. Why? Well, I lived here and... Oops. And, 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 no, I did. I did. And my friend did the sound at SNL and I got to the... Like, does the name Joan Collins make you jealous? No. Oh. Have you seen her lately? In restaurants, they were shutting down so everybody could run out of the kitchen and watch you on television. Isn't that amazing? Well, it was. I'd never seen anything quite like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, as it should be. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's just... Is that just bold to you? Or? We have tape? Tape of what? Tape... Why can't we just talk to each other? Why do we have to have all this contrived? <laughs> you know, the tape, the list, everything. <laughs> if you are ever going to get a two shot, you have to shoot it from over there. Yeah, okay, this is the two shot now, but when you want to get single shots, they'll move over. Do not, excuse me, what's your name? Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot over there. there. You've since gone on to do much, much better nudes, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Somebody is making so much fucking noise. That same demeanor has made her the boss of the world and well, the world, the 80s and 90s would marvel at and mock her blonde ambition, but it proved to be incredibly successful nonetheless. Speaking of, leaving the 80s, she went from pop tart to queen of pop and to the consummate pop artist all within the span of about six years. Entering the 90s would combine all of these accomplishments and traits into one show. Enter the merging of theater and pop music, her single finest moment as an entertainer, and the one that would change fashion and pop music forever. Like a Virgin, Blonde Ambition World Tour, 1990. This performance delivers what Madonna gives best, sexy raw vocals, great choreography, and hard carnal sex. It's not her best display of vocal technique and certainly not technical dance moves, but it is something that Madonna gives that no one else can. Quite simply, it is the most Madonna, Madonna performance of all time. No one else can match that energy. However, throughout that tour, she did display some fine vocals and more than excellent dance moves. But in true Madonna fashion, the most controversial elements of her craft often supersede the parts where she is an impressive talent with a unique worldview. This is who she is. This is what she became, the girl who cannot help but to push a few buttons, both with and without much intent. Her public image can almost be purely defined by attention-seeking, often much to her own dismay. Oh, the terrors of being an it girl. Can pull off any look and do it so well that people think you're a stylish fashion woman thing with a record deal and not a singer first. In my previous documentary, Madonna, The Power of Image, I stated that, quote, Madonna's PR is well enunciated by the fact that she's severely self-aware. She is both the canvas and the dolly, the marble and the Michelangelo of her image. Has she ruined her legacy? One built on fans who know the full extent of her incredible live performance ability and an industry that may not respect her talents as a musician, but will tip their hats to her most masterful branding. Regardless, she is a moment. Her iconic imagery has impacted the pop culture lexicon unlike any other, and within the context of mass media, she always will stand out among her peers because she's either outsold them, outperformed them, or outlived them. Sometimes, all three. But beyond that, she is the chameleon. What a wild run. The early to mid 80s boy toy look, the spelt gamine glamour of 86's true blue, the dark natural hair color of 89's like a prayer, the blonde ambition ponytail and cone bras, the bondage dominatrix of 92's erotica, the denim clad ray of light dancing in front of a time lapse, the 70's disco inferno inspired look of 2005's confession on a dance floor, and countless others. The list goes on and on as does the beat, as does Madonna.
Do you think perhaps that you will be someone who will challenge this kind of taboo of like women losing their sexuality or not being seen as sexual animals as much when they get past say 40 or 40? Yes, I mean, I think, I think that not only do we suffer from racism and sexism and things like that, but we also suffer from ageism and that is that once you reach a certain age, you're not allowed to be adventurous, you're not allowed to be sexual, you know, it, and I think that's rather hideous. And I mean, a lot of people have said, oh, it's so pathetic, or what, what is she going to, I hope she's not still doing that in 10 years. I mean, who cares? What if I am? I mean, is there a rule? I mean, what, are you supposed to just die when you're 40? I mean, and, and that's basically what everyone wants people to do, and I think it's stupid. You're just supposed to just kind of, you know, put yourself out to pasture. It's, put yourself back in the closet. Exactly. I mean, why? Life is long. People are living to be, you know, 100, 100 years old, so... You know, I don't get it. Funnily enough, back then we were asking how long she'd be doing this even when she was just in her early 30s. Funny how time changes. Ageism, as she claims, is her pitfall. Did we have very many examples of women in rock still going and going as hard at the mainstream charts as her? No, not really. She is her own template. As she prepares her own biopic to be shared with the world, I wonder how much of her perfect image crafting machine of a mind will truly let her be more human than icon. Instead, she's been giving us the icon that can be refreshingly and incredibly human when she wants to be. Can she come off as fully genuine yet still in control as we know her to be? Time will tell. Do you, are you close to them? I am. Yeah. Isn't it great to be able to call them up? And I don't know, do you, I don't know if you call your mother all the time, but it's so, I... I call my mother all the time. Yeah, well, I am constantly, uh, you know, in, in, in these situations where I'm completely frustrated and absolutely no one can come to my rescue and make me feel better. And I always say, God, I wish I had a mother that I could call. And, um, I don't. What do you do with that you just you're by yourself um yes well when i'm dead they'll finally kiss my ass <laughs> <laughs> oh we will michael whitney prince you that is how it works the woman who single-handedly changed fame for the 80s 90s and 2000s knows very well what it means to sit atop a pedestal Knowing Madonna, her creativity will let her pick up those shattered pieces for a new visual aesthetic to join her other incredible conceptual albums in her timeless library. She's the one we can't get rid of. That's Madonna. Divisive, controversial, creative. A very human survivor of the inhuman condition of fame. So much more than a material girl. Far from being like a virgin, and proud to stand in the face of ridicule. If you enjoyed this documentary, leave a like and comment what Madonna's public persona means to you. Turn on notifications to get more documentaries as soon as they drop. Doc you. Subscribe to join the U Universe. The first show I did, ever did was in sixth grade. And I painted my, my body with fluorescent paints and I put a bikini on and I put a flashing fluorescent black light in front of me and turned all the lights off and danced in front of it to a, a song by The Who. Do you remember the reaction? Yeah, everyone loved it. My father grounded me for months, punished me afterwards. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> when Marilyn Monroe was alive, they were so vicious and cruel to her. They ripped her to shred. They wouldn't give it up to her in any way, shape, or form. And then when she died, it was just like, oh, she's a comedic genius. I mean. Excuse me. I mean, they do that to everybody. They did it to Vincent van Gogh. They, they, I mean, it's, history just repeats itself over and over again that way. We are a couple of weeks into the new year. What do you hope will happen, not only in 1984, but for the rest of your professional life? What are your dreams? What's left? Mm, to rule the world. <laughs> there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Madonna. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. I 
am the one what? I am the one everything. That's a lot to live up to. I hope I don't disappoint you. God knows I've disappointed a few people in my lifetime.